Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm April Honey and I am so excited to bring you this code today. We're going to be making a wooden deck today, but not just any wooden deck. We're going to be making a beautiful wooden deck that has some accent pieces, a couple little cutesy pieces, a way to lay down rugs on it. Let's just get started. The first thing we're gonna do is divide the vertical lines to make the boards. We're gonna be using uh, three boards for this. The top one is going to go on the 10th space down and then the bottom ones are gonna go 11 and 11. In order to make one space, it's gonna be a nine uh, space plank and the other one's going to be a 10 and a 10. There's no way to do it actually in thirds because we have 32 spaces here. So we're going to pick the darkest color, of course, for the in-between lines, and then we're going to put the lightest color for the top highlight at the top of the board. And then we're going to texturize. So I use the center color in order to um, just shade in all of the boards. And then I use the one color below that to add some shading and the one color above that to add a little bit of highlighting. And then I do go back with a darker color to add like a little bit of holes, you know, just some natural wood texture, right? So the kind of things you would see in trees with like little dark spots here and there, we want those in the planks as well because that makes it look a little bit more natural. So we're just add adding a little bit of wood texturing. The thing that I found with wood is that less is more, you guys. The more you mess with it, the less it's just harder it's harder to maintain the more you do to it so make sure you just keep it manageable and easy going right so just do some light texturing make sure your right and your left kind of match up a little bit so that when you use this piece in a continuum that it doesn't look broken in between and that is an important detail so just make sure wherever you're ending on the right is where you're picking up on the left and that's like literally the most important detail that I can give you is to make sure that those those aren't going to look too jarring when they touch edges because the way the pixel art is, you know, it can look a little bit jarring if you don't have it that way. We're going to rename this. We're going to name it Wooden Deck because I'm oh so creative when it comes to coming up with these names, right? So to make the end pieces, all I'm doing is shading down the side um, to mark the edge of the piece. And then I'm adding that highlight right below the shading, just because I imagine that the light's gonna hit on the edges of those. And then, and that's it. I'm putting a clear spot in between in order to make the plates look like they stand out. And I'm adding some nails, two spaces in and one down. That's it. Um, we're going to do the same thing to the other side because symmetry, right? And it's going to look exactly the same on the other side. Uh, we're going to imagine that this light source is coming from straight, straight ahead and it's going to be just like that. Super easy. I did add in another piece. I wanted a little accent piece. I wanted one with like little fallen flowers on it and I thought that would be cute. So I started with the leafage, you know, cause leaves are good. I started with the leaves. As always, I just worked with a, um, the middle color and then I went and filled it in with the lighter and the darker color, you know, just to, just to make it look natural, I guess. And then we went in with a flower. I went ahead and I used the same flower that I'm using throughout the codes on this island. I like to keep them all cohesive and then um, for varying islands. And then later on, I can make different ones if I want something different. But I do like this flower. I feel like it's very basic and it's and it'll pretty much go anywhere. And then we went ahead and we shaded in our leaves because of course we needed to shave, shade in our leaves. And I'm going to add a little bit of a drop shadow on these because it's going to make it pop up from the plank. Otherwise, it'll blend in a little bit. And I don't really want that. So I went ahead and added just a tiny bit of a drop shadow on the leaves and stuff. It's not too obvious when you're looking at the code itself, but it just adds a little bit of something to make it look like it's, um, you know, laying on top of it instead of not flattened into it. 
So that was kind of an important detail to me. So we went ahead and we did that. Very basic, but effective. Such a cute little piece though. Look at that, it's so pretty. And then I went ahead and made another piece with just the leaves because what if we don't want flowers? And it's always good to have a couple accent pieces, especially on this island. I have so many custom codes available that it really doesn't matter. Like I can use as many as I want. So um, we're going to make the little leaf pattern and all I'm going to do is add a few leaves. That's it. Just sprinkle them on there and I just wanted a little little bit of a little touch. I might do one with a book, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll see. Or a dropped letter because it is Valentine's Day, right? So I might do a piece with a dropped letter somewhere later. But we'll see how I feel about that later. Again, if you guys watch these tutorials, all of the pixels are over in the Discord where I share with you exactly how I make things. This is not a huge secret to me. Like, I don't want to keep this from you guys. If you want to, to see the pixels, you're more than welcome to take a screenshot and copy it as it is. Or um, you can go to the Discord and download the photos that I upload there. So that was the basic code. And now what we're doing is I'm taking away the flowers and at the very end, I'm making a white ruffle. So I want to be able to put a uh, I want to be able to put blankets on this wooden deck and I want it to look like it belongs there. So I'm making a little ruffle coat along the edge. So the first thing I did was I blocked it off. I made a little bit of like an elastic situation, right? Because there's always like a, a little elastic band for ruffles and that's how it starts and that's where you put it in and then the fabric bunches out from there. So I wanted to create that little band of the bunchy fabric right there to make it really, really look like it belongs there. And then I'm just going and blocking this out. It kind of doesn't really matter how you shape your ruffles. Um, what really matters is where you um, shade and highlight. So you can shape this however you want. You're more than welcome to copy the way I did it, but um, you can also just, just put in whatever feels good to you at the time. Now, for me, when the ruffle goes down, that is a dark piece. That's where it goes in. And then where it, it goes um, more to the right, where it comes out, that is the part that is above that's the part that's closer to you and that's how i shade it so i just envision it um the parts that are closest to me are the parts that are jumping out of away from the boards and so we shade it according to that and that's what i'm doing here i'm just adding in some natural shading you don't need too many colors for this. I think I ended up with four. I did add one darker color in order to do like the deeper shadow, but that's pretty much it. It was just a, it, it was just a three, four color combination. The thing you want to do is make sure the top and the bottom line up because you're going to want to be able to place this in a row. And you want to make sure the top and the bottom of the pieces line up. I also added a little bit of a drop shadow here to make it look like the ruffle was lifted off of the board, right? And it added that effect. I did the same exact thing on the other side. I started with that elastic band. Now, whatever you did for the ruffle or lace or whatever you chose to do, just uh, do it on the other side. It doesn't have to be exact by all um, like there's no way to do it exactly unless you go and you take a picture and then you copy it inverted. I don't do that. Um, honestly, like who has time for that? I just don't do that. That seems that seems like a lot of work and I don't I don't really want to work that hard for my coats. So what I am doing, though, on this side a little bit different is I have a better idea of how I shaded things. So I'm kind of marking that off a little bit more on this on this side of it than I did on the other side. So I have a better idea of the ones that are taking the deep dives inwards are going to be down closer to the fabric. They're more in a shadow. And so I did um, 
kind of block it off accordingly straight from the get-go instead of just filling it in and going and um, doing it right off. It actually, it was pretty spot on. I was, I was rather surprised with myself that it did come out that way. And there we have the in, inside pieces. I am going to go and shade just a little bit more. I think I had it too bright or too, too much white. So I did go and I shaded a little bit more. I added a darker color to, in order to shade more. In between these, I am leaving in where you guys see that I'm placing down the code because that is what I do. I place these down in between. I don't always show you guys that, but I do place them down in between. And I look at how it's going on the ground because it looks so much different in practice than it does on these pixels. They never look right on the pixels, but when you put them down, they tend to look so much better. So keep that in mind when you're making these codes like that it's going to look different on the ground. Make sure you put it down and then you look at it or on the simple panel, whichever whichever direction you're going in. It could be on a sim simple panel. It could be a simple panel code for you. So whatever it is, make sure you're looking at that. Um, and we did add in that darker shaded color and you saw on the last one that I was doing when I was babbling that I did add that in and we did that, we're doing that over on this side too, just adding a little bit of a darker shading in in order to have some areas really sink in. And I kind of like the way that came out. Like honestly, look at, I think it came out kind of cute, right? Um, I'm very excited for you guys to see this code and let me know what you guys think. It's my first time venturing into making a code like this. I usually just avoid them and I don't use them, but this time it was Valentine's Day and I felt like my island really needed something like this and it's been on my list for a very, very long time. I have this long list of codes that I want to try someday eventually and uh, not enough time to do them all, unfortunately, but we did get to this one. I'm super excited about it. You guys will have to let me know what you think. And then, of course, just in case I wanted this to be an end piece and I don't have a ton of room, like if I'm on a beach or something and I don't have a ton of room to make like the deck, then of course, you know, I added the end piece versions of it um, just in case I wanted it to be like edged off right around the blanket or for like a villager's doorstep or something like that. I went ahead and I did that. And then of course we're gonna add in the nails because of course, why wouldn't we? And that was that. And then just for good measure, I went ahead and I took off the wooden deck just to have the ruffle itself. Like what if I wanna just have a blanket with a cute ruffle instead of the tassels that I have on the other code? So like now I have a couple different ways to frame a blanket and who can get mad about that, right? So yeah, there's a couple different ways to use this code, a couple different things you can make with it. Codes like this are great because they offer you so many different variations. And there you have it. I hope everyone has an amazing day. Thank you guys for being here. You'll have to let me know down in the comments. I'm very excited to know what you guys think of this one. And um, I know you guys could be doing absolutely anything in the whole world and you're here with me. I appreciate you so much. Until next time, bye.